that are meant perhaps beloved ones of God, beloved brothers and sisters, to talk. And I really mean it. Because sometimes I'm not just because of this. Am I talking loud enough? A little loud. You know, I can't judge for myself because my voice is very stubborn. I miss him now. Better now? Um, there is a book which is called Once Upon a Time. Um, I don't make any money out of it, so don't think that I have some interest in saying what I'm saying. But in that book, there are precious stories of the old days in Israel. And there are stories which um, would be difficult for me to put into words, but um, easier to put them, to write them down. They have been written down. Uh, the only way you can get that book is uh, through the uh, headquarters if you move. If you wish to have it, just ask Camila and she will. Does it exist anymore in English? Yes, sir. It's published in Holland. Uh, before I start, uh, I, I would be happy to answer any questions so that I know in what direction to go. Could you please speak about Begum Amina? Well, no, I did the other day. I did say, um, I did tell a few stories. Um, is there, who was here who were not present when I told a few stories? <laughs> <laughs> about her that the... I have a question. Yeah. You, you spoke a lot about the hardships that she endured. Can you... Can you speak louder? You spoke a lot about the hardships that your mother endured. Yeah. Can you speak a little bit about the happy times that you endured? Wow. Well, of course, how could a mother ever be happier than to have four children? <laughs> <laughs> but all among which uh, at least one was very, very difficult to handle. <laughs> so, of course, uh, um, as we all know, there's, there's this American word, um, the mother's love is the only love that, um, that is really uh, free of charge. It's not, it's not exactly, there's a number of right words, but uh, what are the right words? What do you mean? That means that, of course, um, however difficult life is for a mother, if uh, she has children, she, that is her greatest happiness. Is that a good answer? Yeah. Okay. Um, That's now, a good start. Oh, That's only a good start. I don't think it's a complete answer. <laughs> I'm not satisfied. <laughs> How about events, something that happened? Just some event that happened. Event? Yeah. Well, in itself, I think it's a great event that um, um, the, the father and mother came together. That was a miracle. You want to know something about it? Yes. 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 When you told it last time, uh, I tried to tell it again. Uh, perhaps adding a little bit more color to it. Thank you. <laughs> Each time one tells a story, one tells it in a different shape. Um, my father was, uh, the fame of my father as a musician was, was, uh, came to the attention of Mary Baker Eddy. Uh, does anybody of uh, you know who is Mary Baker Eddy? Yes. 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 
and um, uh, she thought it would be uh, interesting, a good uh, one for the bench, to invite a, a great musician from India to come and uh, offer Indian music for the first time in America. This is an historical fact. It was the first time that Indian music was ever introduced in America. And that was in the Hindu temple in San Francisco, which uh, does not exist anymore, has been broken down. But I did have the privilege of visiting it, visiting it, visiting, visiting it uh, a few years ago, just before it was broken down. Um, we all know the story, you can find it in the biography if you don't know it. Uh, the yogi, who was, of course, happy to have for the Hindu temple to have been hired for that occasion, um, was unhappy of the fact that the musician was, in, was Muslim. And in those days, it was hardly possible for a Muslim uh, to play music in a Hindu temple. Is it, is it done today? It is. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Uh, so, of course, he said to the musician, well, uh, half an hour, that will be all right. Now, we all know, and I think you know than anybody else, that it takes more than half an hour to, to, to choose the beat out. So, of course, Harun Nathan uh, always said, whatever happened, he always said, it will be all right, it will be all right. Uh, that was one of his um, life on tips. He constantly do it. Whatever happened, whether it was good or bad, he always said, it will be all right. Uh, he was very optimistic. Um, and it did come all right. It's very important to remember, it's perhaps a very good lesson, Whatever trouble one has, well, it will come all right, and it sometimes it does. <laughs> Not always. Um, perhaps later. Um, but what did he do? He only sang Hindu music, and the most sacred music with such devotion and such beauty that the audience of Hindus were so tremendously deeply moved and they went, they, they, said, they just went on saying, we want more, we want more, we want more, and it went on and went on and went on. And the yogi said, I have never heard a Hindu musician uh, play as beautifully our sacred songs, as you most have offered us. Um, he did write a letter which is to be found in the Bible. And um, Mary Baker Eddy came with her niece, was a young girl, brown hair, blue eyes, magic happened. She fell in love. Who was it? They fell in love? Her name is Ora Ray Baker, a young girl from California, um, the niece of uh, Judge Baker, who was that famous uh, judge in Albuquerque. There's a huge statue of uh, Judge Baker in Albuquerque. Uh, was her uncle. And they own acres and acres of the whole area of Santa Barbara, Santa Ana, and all that area was mostly belonged to that Baker family. But in those days, it was just impossible to imagine an Indian and an American. Uh, there was such a tremendous uh, racial problem, uh, 
nobody here would ever imagine how, how, how strict it was. And the life of Hazrat Khan in our town was threatened over and over again, of course. Um, Hazrat Khan left America, went to London with a clever girl, you know, young American girls are very clever, I don't know if you know that, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, found among the papers that he left, you know, Indians are not always very orderly. <laughs> and if you know that. Um, the address of um, the house of Baroda. And so she wrote to the family, found the address, I mean, not the address, jumped into a ship. In those days, passports did not exist. And uh, knocked at the door. You're right. What a tremendous energy. What a tremendous courage. Have they been corresponding? Have they been writing? No, 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 no. And can, no, can no, he no. declare himself to her? Look, in those days there was no email. <laughs> <laughs> No, she just went. She didn't know what she would, uh, what to expect. She just left, left her family, and 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 of course. Uh, Asha, I think what Asha was trying to ask is, hadn't her husband and I kind of expressed something to her to give her the sense that he would be sent? Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't understand what you said. Hadn't, hadn't Hazrat and I Khan expressed something to her when they were together uh, of, a, of a similar affection so she would have a reason to come to Europe. When they were in America together? In no, of course not. No. No, she was no. an elderly no, young woman. Can't just said to her, well, this, this just can't, can't work because it's not possible. I mean, he was, she was an Indian musician and this was an American young girl that in those days it's impossible to imagine anything uh, that anything could develop in any way. But she had that dream, and um, and uh, and she just left. And there's a story to that. Uh, Hazrat Nahan tells the story himself that she dreamt that she saw a sage, and she described that sage. And Hazrat Khan said to her, well, that's the picture of Namur. Yeah. Now, uh, I, I think that many of you know that um, the Mushad of Hazrat Khan said, go to the West and unite uh, the East and West with, his, with your music and with your message. So somehow, there was this force which brought them together, an unknown force. Don't know if you understand what I'm saying, I'm trying to be, un to be clear about being unclear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and this is a very important, this is a very important thing, because all right, you might say it, her love was so strong that she just left everything, an extremely uh, well-to-do family, and just went uh, to Europe knowing that there would be nothing there. Did she ever have contact with her family in America again? No, no. no. her family, absolutely. Disorder, disorder, disorder. How old was she? And then, very young, in, a, in London, 15. she had to uh, be the mother.
not that mother. Not only the wife of Hanuman Nata, but the mother of the brothers. There were three brothers. No, at least two. Uh, no, two. We had the three later. And uh, hardly any possibility of, of communicating in English. He could hardly speak English in those days. Did she, and then feed them? One, did, did she uh, feed them and do their laundry? Pardon me? Did she feed them and do their laundry? And but in those days, there was no wash machine. There was no fridge. There was, what was there? Nothing. There was, and they could not afford any help? <clears throat> there was no money. There was no money. <coughs> they went down from time to time to give a concert of Indian music. and. Uh, There was a lot of starvation. But she did it gladly. She was happy. But the sacrifice was tremendous. Here she had been the daughter of an extremely wealthy family. She came there to London where there was actually no financial help of any kind and where they lived from day to day because uh, they only lived for the, from the councils that were given from time to time. And I'm, of course, uh, they only really fed on, on rice and tea for, for quite a long time. It's very important to tell this because it is a true story. I mean, uh, it's, how would I say now, it, it's, in, it, it's hardly possible to imagine the, the, the trouble, the, the, the suffering and, and the problems that both the mother and father went through in the, in the first years. Um, and then, of course, the troubles became even worse uh, as the children were born because, of course, more, more uh, necessities, more worries. That's why sometimes that you Get guilty for being a child. Because I did cause, of course, more trouble. Did you say something about the one pair of shoes? Uh -huh. We've heard stories that in the winter time there was only one pair of shoes. Shoe, what? shoe, shoe. That there were. Only one pair, only one set of shoes. Is that a true well, story? Let's not go into many details. Stay with the mom. I don't want to stop. I don't want to do that. No. <laughs> so, here at Diet, yeah. your, for the oldest sister, Nuranisa, was born in well, Russia. She was born in, 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 in Moscow, yes. So, how did the family go from London to Moscow? Well, by train. No planes. I mean, they just, the impulse came to go to Moscow or they just... Uh, well, uh, they, you see, they gave concerts. And of course, um, from time to time, prominent people came to those concerts and were very uh, interested. And especially Russians. There were many Russians in those days in, in England. Uh, and some of them were quite uh, going to do. And um, some, they, here, no, you've caught me here because I don't exactly know the connection between in, uh, London and, 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 and Russia, but um, for, there must have been someone in London who was uh, a friend of uh, the, the son of Tolstoy because um, when they came to Moscow, it was the son of Tolstoy who uh, arranged a, a whole series of concerts for them and uh, that's where things became better. So it must have been some connection that I can't tell you. Uh, but um, uh, Natal was extremely happy to be in Russia because the Russians are very, at least in those days, were very, very warm and very sweet. And, uh, Still are. Still he just loved Russia. He loved the Russian people. 
especially having been in England. <laughs> what are the reasons why the memory of my mother has never been 
are exposed, but I know what the reasons are. But I would not say that there was a reason. Mariah's question was so good. Uh, yeah, tell, Mariah's question was so nice. Tell us more about her character when she when she came in the room. Uh, you know, how they, uh, you know. I will now. All right. Uh, her function was to um, receive the guests um, and to to uh, you see in those days there was no secretary, so she did all the the, the secretary work and uh, and received guests and uh, she did a lot of, um, <coughs> how to say now, um, hostess work, gallery work, that way. And this is another thing that most people don't know, many of them, many of the first articles of the night time were written by Bedouin, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. He told her more or less uh, what to write and she put it in, in words. When she would receive the guests, was she a quiet person? Or when, was she, when she would receive the guests, was she a quiet person? Or oh, no, was she, she very conversational? No, what? she was, what was she uh, like? extremely, uh, extremely communicative. That was her, her whole personality was communicating. And of course, uh, in the early days, in England, you know, in England they, they, they were also extremely racial, just like in America. Uh, a little bit less, but still. Ah, another point, <laughs> which is extremely important to you know. Hazrat Nan Khan had, um, for the first time, um, performed the zikr with women and men together, you know. Well, the, the Arabs separate the women and the men and they have their good reasons. But, uh, but here they were together. And uh, some of the mullahs there in, in, in London threatened the life of my father over and over again. Besides that, the fact that a Muslim had married a Christian was How did she deal with that? Did she have a sense of dignity about herself or her well, being? How, or humility? How, how did she deal with those situations? To answer that question, uh, I'm sure that she was able to, uh, <coughs> to handle it because otherwise uh, she wouldn't have been able to survive all those difficulties all the years. Um. I guess I'm asking what, as a child, watching your mother, and, as a child, watching your mother in those situations, what, what did you see? Did you, what kind of qualities did you see her dealing with those very difficult situations? Well, she was extremely motherly in one way, I, I, I mean, on one side and on the other side, extremely social. She was extremely, as I said, communicative, I mean, but that social. She was, Friendly and loving, and uh, and uh, that um, that helped very much to attract the English uh, Marines. Mm -hmm. Did you otherwise would have been scared to, be, to come to this Indian surrounding? <clears throat> yeah. Did you have to play your violin for the guests? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's another story. <laughs> Ali Khan, my uncle. Uh, ah, yes, first of all, let me start like this. I did not know anything about, I didn't know that Western music existed. Because I only heard of Indian music. My father was singing and playing the Veena, and Mushd Ali Khan singing, and Mushd Khan, and so on. We did not know that Western music existed. Look, beloved brothers and sisters, can't you realize there was no radio, there was no television? Nobody went to concerts and concert halls in those days. I mean, uh, at least uh, it were only connoisseurs who would go to the concert, not the And one 
day, Mushra Ali Khan said, there's a, very, there's a strange event happening in Paris. I heard him talking. You shouldn't know more than you think it would. <laughs> imagine, he said, imagine that orchestra of Amsterdam is coming to Paris to give a concert. So I, I want to go there. So of course I was just forcing and forcing and forcing my way till finally my uncle said, all right, I'll take it. Oh, wow. And I never understood why he did it. I mean, just a little rascal. <laughs> um, what, I was about seven, I think, something like that. And, um, yeah, I mean, how could you take a boy of seven to a concert? I can't, you know, now I, I'm thinking, thinking, no, I just can't understand how, how that happened. But it did happen. So it was the, con uh, the Amsterdam, uh, the concert of our orchestra of, of, of Amsterdam. But I don't know if any of you ever heard the name of Micha Elma. He was the most famous violinist in the world. So he played the set of Beethoven, and um, I was just mad in the press. So, when I came back home, I want to buy it, I want to buy it, I want to buy it. <laughs> but there was no money to buy a violin. So then, because my father is usual, all will be right, all will be right. <laughs> and then one day, uh, my mother said this surprise. There was a little man. Uh, 
de la Cerro, din Bale, în Domnul Sistă de Piam. And she organized concerts, I mean, a children's concert, just to encourage us to play the music. And that's something I'll also be very good. Um, so what was your wazifa? I will not tell you. <laughs> fair, that's fair. That's my secret. <coughs> uh, that's too sacred to talk about. What's your set? Can you tell about your musical training in Paris? Yes, that's why I have nothing to do with my mother. Mm -hmm. It's true. Well, of course, um, she always wanted the best of the best. And um, so we were. <coughs> Did did she teach you like in terms of reading or writing or was that something? Oh no, no, that's a good question. That's a good question and uh, that has helped me a lot in my life later. She always made sure that we each one of us, ever we got a little card or a birthday card or a Christmas card or something, she just did not leave us alone until we could we would answer those cards. If ever the first anybody, you know, the Maurits used to send us little cards, but she just made sure that we thanked for those cards. And this is, um, I think, a very important lesson. She always uh, taught us um, that the most the greatest secret of happiness is gratitude and appreciation. Did she sing your lullabies to sleep? I mean, what song did she sing you to make you to help you go to sleep? No, it was our father. Our father, um, after the whole day of interviews and lectures and, and letters, he did write some letters also. There are many letters in the archives. There are many, many handwritten writings. I can't understand how my father could have possibly done all that. <laughs> Each Marine got a letter, handwritten letter. There were many of them by the archives. Um, so after a whole day work, he still found time to come and sing to us in our bedrooms. Uh, many of those songs that I've written down.
something my mother absolutely refused. She absolutely refused for the guardian to take care of the children. She said, no, it's my duty. And she just kept on that thinking till the end. Uh, but that is a problem. That's the cause of many problems. Uh, because the guardian that was uh, Pointed by the judge was one of my uncles. So she said, No, it's my duty to take care of my children, not the guardian. Understand it the way you want, but I think a mother understands. Good reasons why my mother absolutely refused. And that, of course, was misunderstood by the Sufis in those days. Who, of course, started a lot of stories about, you know, people always like telling stories. But... <laughs> you asked me to tell them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she's against the Sufi, she's not a Sufi, she's against the uncle and all that, which is not true. Which is not true. Of course he gave that impression, but it's not true. If my brother gave a lot, problem with Mushad Ali Khan. That had, my mother had nothing to do with that. That was his problem. His problem. There was no connection between um, the previous story of the guardianship or, 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 and this one. They are two different stories. But sometimes people put them together. Yes, um, when she was a young girl, um, California, of course, she played the guitar. Oh, <laughs> wow. she was, yes, she did play the guitar. Yes, yes. It, it, I forgot to tell you that. And um, uh, did she have it with she you? She had the guitar, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And she was uh, extremely, um, uh, she was a fan of uh, Segovia. You heard of Segovia? Yes. Can you tell us of her sense of humor? Uh, uh, 
Yes. Can you can you tell us of her style of humor, uh, her sense of humor, how she how it manifested? Well, you know that um, as of usually, I think generally Americans are very humorous. <laughs> Yes, all right. Uh, just to give perhaps a parallel uh, uh, story. Uh, I don't know if any of you know this. You all know, you know, uh, you've heard of the Theosophical Society. Yes. You know about Mary, Mary um, what's the name now? Uh, Annie Besant. Annie Besant, yeah. One day, uh, well, as in Annie Besant, we were always talking about the messenger to come, the messenger to come, the messenger to come. You know that, yeah? Yeah. Um, she organized a, a huge conference in, in Holland. Um, I think it was in Sais, if I'm not mistaken, um, where uh, she invited the 
de, 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 de crème de la crème, hein, du fait de la tonique, du aristocracy in, in Holland in those days, and all the richest people in Holland, uh, to come to hear this great sage from India. She invited, or she often invited sages, uh, Indian, uh, Indian uh, teachers. So she invited her to Nan Khan, who gave a fantastic speech. And um, after the speech, she called her to Nan Khan to have an interview with her. One day, uh, Baron from Dark said to Hazard Khan, just stop calling me Baron. Some others said, stop calling me Prince. <laughs> <laughs> it's what to do. So Hazard Khan said, well, I'll give you a Sufi name. Then I can call it by the Sufi name. So Baron asked her, what does it mean? So um, uh, it was embarrassing for those who were not 
started conversation and so then she invited him in that house. And that house was the house of the, uh, the Dutch consul in, in, in Switzerland who later became the national representative. And that's where he met uh, with Zanetti and, and, and Jacques where they created for the first time, that was in 1922, where the Sufi movement was created and the order which had been in London was closed, I mean closed in London, but was transported into the Sufi movement in Geneva. This is a historical story. It's a magic event. And then, um, as of that moment, everything started. Now, why did Hazrat Dan Khan call this Sufi movement? <coughs> why didn't he want to call it Sufi order like it had been in <coughs> Because this is the, the, the Sufi movement, the channel of the message. Well, the message is a flow of energy. A movement is something that moves on. The argument, this movement is very important. It's not just happen, it just happens. So, with intention, he uses the word movement. Uh, 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 thinking of a, con a, a, a continual flow of the message. Uh, he, he went away from the order, which is stagnant, into a movement which flows on, onwards. A new impulse, and I have the courage to say today, at that instant, Hazrat Nasan closed the doors 
of his connection with the Christian order. And there is a Gatika, number 14. And if anybody wants, uh, um, you have probably read it and never understood what was in it. If any of you want it, ask Kamila, she can send it to you. And that same, <coughs> and that same text is also in the biography, uh, in, in, uh, in, 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 in the brown books. And many of you have read it and not understood what was in it. In that text, which is a historical text, Hazrat Khan says, I owe so much to the Chistia order, but now the time has come, these are his own words, the account is closed. That means, now that's past, I am grateful, and now we go on. The new envelopes of the Sufi message, we are no more, uh, we do not give any more priority to any particular Baraka, uh, 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 now it is the universal Baraka, the message, not an individual Baraka, the, the, the universal Baraka. Very important point. Maybe that's a good time for us to, uh, to uh, have uh, our lunch together. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I'm angry, but there's one more story I just must say. I must tell it. My,